One of the most fearful uh, and far to be settled debates and concerning nutrition is uh, the question is if gluten is toxic for everybody. So I would like to really briefly review the facts and fantasies so we can have a, a straight answer here. Uh, fact number one, is it true that gluten cannot be digested by anybody? The answer is yes, it is true. Gluten is a complex of proteins that needs to be digested in order for us to make use of. And contrary to many other proteins come for foods, we are not capable to completely dismantle gluten in a single forming blocks that are called amino acids. So what is left after the digestion of gluten are fragments, what we call technically peptides, that can communicate with us and do something that eventually could have some um, you know, consequences. Second question, it is true that gluten increased gut permeability, otherwise uh, said, you know, leaky gut in everybody? The answer is yes, that's true. Some of these undigested fragments can communicate with our guts and make them leakier so that these fragments can sneak in, in our body and uh, pass in from the intestinal lumen uh, in uh, our circulation. Question number three, because the first two are true facts. It is true then that we can always pay consequences by eating gluten because you know we cannot digest completely and we increase gut permeability and therefore we will be made sick if we avoid if we do not avoid gluten from our diet. The answer is no, that's false. While it's true that everybody will have problem to completely digest gluten and these fragments that are undigested can come through it is also true that, you know, this is the consequence of mechanisms that were in place to defend us against possible enemies. And indeed, gluten is uh, managed by our surveillance system as a fragment of a microorganism, and we unleash the same kind of response when we are eventually exposed to these microorganisms. Once gluten fragments make the journey and come in our body, the destiny of what happened it really depends who we are, genetically speaking. The vast majority of us are genetically uh, predisposed to manage this correctly, so much so that we will not have consequences and therefore clinically we will not have any problems in eating gluten. A minority of us will, on the other hand, be genetically predisposed to have you know, some clinical consequences. Which one? It depends what kind of genetic predisposition we're talking about. 1% of the general population is genetically predisposed to respond to this chain of events by mounting an autoimmune response that translates in the damage of the intestine and the clinical consequences typical of celiac disease. Another small percentage between 0.3 and 0.5% will eventually mount an allergic response to gluten as we do for any other you know, food stuff if we're genetically predisposed with clinical consequences of uh, developing with allergy. And finally, a third group of individuals, and a percentage we don't know exactly yet, will have yet in another form of immune response that translate in non celiac gluten sensitivity or short gluten sensitivity with clinical consequences. Bottom line. It is not true that everybody needs to go gluten-free to stay healthy, but it's true that there is a subgroup of individual that will be, because of their genetic predisposition, pay consequences if they eat gluten and therefore they need to avoid gluten from their diet.